Well, we, we've historically at the bank had separate tiers for a lot of these things is, you know, some of the security constraints. And when you look at things like Microsoft Internet Information Server, SQL Server, um, there's all kinds of exploits if you co-locate these things in the same box. Um, so to some extent, I'm wondering whether you've thought about a more granular architecture whereby you would still have these pods, you have that same kind of expansion, the elasticity concept, uh, but, you know, give the customers a little bit more flexibility in terms of what they deploy to each, separation of tiers if necessary. Presumably you would do that through VMs and things on, on those pods anyway. Yeah, yeah, I think, I think at the end of the day, uh, virtualization layer is beautifully sandboxed a lot of these things. Now, if you don't want to question the hypervisor, the sandboxing is very beautiful. Uh, at the end of the day, if you put two VMs together, and if you believe the hypervisor is doing a good job of sandboxing them, it'll be in good shape. But that being said, there is a piece of orchestration software that you can actually go and then deploy your VMs based on whether you believe finance should sit next to engineering or engineering should sit next to marketing and so on. Mm -hmm. But that's a layer that runs on top of, top of us. Right. It's an orchestration piece that tells you exactly where to provision what based on some policies that you actually set up in your enterprise and so on. The good thing is that uh, security is uh, improved because if you th think about it, uh, NetApp acquired this company, Decrew, about seven years ago. They said, we can't run encryption in the box because there are two Xeons and they couldn't run encryption inside it for data at rest. So effectively what we've done is we have massively parallelized storage. You're saying with every VMware box, you have a storage controller. So now you can do a lot of compute intensive data transformation features, including encryption in the storage there itself. So that some of that, uh, what we call in you know, a division of labor really goes to the storage tier as opposed to every application reinventing the wheel with respect to things like security. By the time the data leaves the appliance for whatever reasons, it's already encrypted and so on. Okay. And my, my second question is really around kind of go-to-market strategy, what, what kind of channels you're exploring. You look at kind of the IBMs of the world, the, you know, the behemoths out there with iDataplex. You know, they've already gone after the pod concept. Obviously, yeah. this adds virtualization and collapses sure. storage. But, I mean, how are you going to compete with those guys? Sure. So I think if we were the only guys uh, preaching convergence, then we'd be dead. We want to ride the wave of these guys marketing converged infrastructures, and we want to ride the wave because by the time we get there, the customer is already educated what this means mm -hmm. and why it's important. Everybody, every server vendor, storage vendor, what it's all is talking about how this is useful. You want to make cloud provisioning formulaic. You want to buy data center as a block. And our block is a 2U. You start with the 2U, you can keep adding more 2Us, and there's nothing more beautiful. We say convergence is about software. It's not about bundling things from different disparate vendors. It's about software. So to answer your question about IBM, we don't believe in OEMing because you park your people for three years there and nothing comes out. You'd rather go and build this company ground up, brick by brick. And initially, the reason why we've done an appliance is because we believe you have more control over packaging and distribution. Well, I'm with you on all that, but how, how do you get it out there? How do you distribute? What are the channels? Well, you start with regional bars because the guys who really want to differentiate because you know, they sell HP gear, IBM gear. There's no difference. Everybody sells everything, right? Mm -hmm. Here you have something that TCO is like 60% better. You're talking about power, cooling, things that people really want to deal with. There's private cloud. You know, people want to sell these things. We have deployed a VDI cloud in 20 minutes. Now, the way it helps the VAR is that he thinks my non-billable billable hours have shrunk from two months because at the end of the day, they had to go together and build this cloud for... VDI, get the storage guy, the network guy, everybody else together. It takes two months to get people on the table. You deliver a box, in 20 minutes you're up and running, you're creating your virtual desktops, you're you know, putting AppSense together, LDAP integration, you know, that's where the money really is. So the VARs really get it. They're like, well, at the end of the day, I can get a return investment much faster mm -hmm. if I really have this shrunk wrap data center as opposed to having to go and clobber together these things from somewhere else. Right. There's one of a, co a question of coexistence. So if, if you've got existing infrastructure and you're looking to move or a, a, a company wants to embrace your technology, uh, is there a coexistence? Uh, what about sure. the, all Good the standard question. tools that they're used to using for sure. system management and orchestration? Yep. Yep. Is, that, is that something you're taking into consideration? Or? Yeah, definitely. Because you go to Fortune 500, they'll always have existing investments in something. Mm -hmm. So our belief is that storage starts at Nutanix. It doesn't end at Nutanix. So you can spill over capacity to a network storage tier as well, or a cloud storage tier. But effectively, we become the Uber virtualization layer that knows how to virtualize Fusion IO cards all the way to Amazon S3. And you get extremely harmonized features from writable snapshots to primary storage DDU to WAN replication. All that stuff comes from this software layer. 
and the rest is relatively commoditized. So we will work with existing network storage if you have uninteresting data you want to spill over to the network storage itself. But you know you don't have to pay for those expensive options anymore. These are just mere spindles. So on the data path, I think we want to coexist with them. On the control path, uh, we have built our own converged manageability console that's extremely pretty and beautiful. And at the same time, it gives you a visibility all the way from compute tier to storage tier and everything in the middle. But we also coexist with vCenter. So there's vSphere GUI and there's Hyper-V. So all, all these uh, different consoles, SCVMM, all that stuff coexists with us. And we don't want to become a control path company. You, you do enough in, the, in, in your manageability console to be able to enable channel and go and do POCs fast and have that aha experience. But there's no point fighting and opening a battlefront when it comes to the control path and saying, well, we can do everything that H HP OpenView can do or, or vSphere GUI can do or something. Okay. okay. Well, okay, yeah, oh. yeah, just a couple of questions. You talked about VDI. Um, can you talk about um, perhaps a use case of very high performance VDI? That's one of the things that I'm fighting with at Tesla because we do a lot of work with CAD, uh, very large data sets uh, up to 20 to 40 gigs at a, at a given time. Um, so we're trying to figure out how we can best use our compute capacity or bring in new capacity, especially from a storage perspective. So if you could talk about a use case. Uh, sure. Uh, in the real so, business world, that would be helpful. So it goes all the way. If you look at... Uh, cheap VDI in call centers where you get one-tenth of a core. If you're talking to Wall Street, they need four cores to a virtual desktop because they're quant guys crunching numbers in a million columns in Excel spreadsheets. It's all over the spectrum, right? Uh, we are starting to go with mid-size where you actually don't really have to go and do one-tenth of a core because it's uninteresting. They don't have a lot of data management features. They can you know, bring up pooled machines and destroy them, and there's not much they really need. They could just use a very low-end box to do, do really do that. But the interesting thing with the money is, is when you start mid-size and go higher up, right? Mm -hmm. uh, when you talk about performance, I think uh, CAD has obviously two parts to the data part, and then there is the graphics part. <coughs> data part, I think we, we can blow away numbers because, that, because we are as close to the compute as possible. You don't even have to traverse the network. You don't have to worry about network provisioning and so on. The graphics part, though, I think the industry is still working on it. NVIDIA is still trying to figure out how to put virtualization in its silicon. Uh, so to be able to deliver high-performance graphics in VDI is work in progress. So we've got to uh, wrap okay. up. We're over our time. Sorry, Robbie. <laughs>